Hello there. Welcome back to the Rich Fritzky Show. And as ever, thanks so much for being with Ukraine. That's where my mind is, folks. There's nowhere else to go at this juncture at this moment in time than there. They stand up to one of the mightiest militaries in the world. They stand up to one of the most vile, corrupt, and powerful leaders on the world stage. They are in battle with the big schoolyard bully who callously invades its peaceful, free, and democratic neighbor, much to the chagrin of its own people and to the world community and to all who pray and hope that the democracies of the world today might sustain themselves in a world in which all too many autocracies rise, consolidate power, and threaten. I am astounded at the courage of President Zelensky and the Ukrainian leadership, astounded at the inspirational performance of the Ukrainian military, and of course the Ukrainian people themselves, astounded at the thousands of civilians who have picked up weapons with which to fight, at the thousands of other civilians who have kept busy making Molotov cocktails, Astounded at the more than 16,000 foreigners who came to Ukraine to honor their courage by putting that courage on the line for them. Amazed at that one Ukrainian with but 13 men standing on a lonely island who had the moxie to respond to a demand from the commander of a Russian warship that he surrender with but two words. And you know just what those words were. I pray as fervently as I can for all who suffer, for all of the dead, the dying, the wounded, the displaced, the scared, the refugees, all those whose hearts are beating on the lines at this very moment, all this pain and suffering because one megalomaniac of a leader who suffers from the delusion that it is his perverted duty to begin putting the pieces of a broken and tyrannical empire back together again. While the world community that would love to support Ukraine is precluded from going all in for them for fear of the utilization of the weapons that must never, ever, ever be unleashed. But they must get all the tools they can to Ukraine. We, others, Europe, must get all we can to Ukraine as quickly as possible. And we must press the economic sanctions to the fullest. Oh yes, we've hurt Putin and his band of rich thugs economically, but now it's time to break them economically, no matter the impacts. For Europe and the U.S. and others must freeze any further imports of Russian oil. Yes, it will hurt, and yes, it will cost more, unless nations are willing to temporarily freeze prices and take the hit themselves on behalf of their people. We all ought to join in solidarity with Ukraine and its people. For what matter a dollar more a gallon when juxtaposed to the unimaginable price being paid by their dying? I can't help but also mourn for the dying of the poor Russians in the field as well, compelled as they are to sacrifice themselves for one, abhorrent as he is, to all with free minds, one who will live, truly live, in infamy in history. And here we are in our America, what was once Abraham Lincoln's last best hope of earth, the once only democratic republic on the planet. Whether or not we save our democracy today is truly and sadly at issue. Our precious democracy is challenged by a maddening divide, aided and abetted by the forces of darkness that seek to sever us from that which is most precious to us, all because of one sick man's perpetration of a nagging fraud. Ukraine and its fight for freedom reminds us of just who we are, of our we the people of the United States of America, of a constitution, of the basic freedoms heralded in our sacred Bill of Rights. It is the same Minutemen of Concord and Lexington in 76 who are standing on the lines with the Ukrainian people today. 
It is our ragtag team of an army that stayed the course with Washington when the odds were all against him and all was in doubt, who are standing with the Ukrainian people today. They remind us, they truly remind us that they are standing up for our very own birthright. Ukraine is teaching us anew of that which we ought to be holding most dear. They remind us that no one who calls themselves an American ought to be fighting against voting rights and threatened with measures and bills that are aimed solely upon making voting more difficult. Why, why on earth should anyone in this most blessed country stand against what these brave Ukrainians are dying today to preserve for themselves? No, no, no. We ought to and must do exactly the opposite. The John Lewis National Voting Rights Act must be passed. They remind us that we ought to be selflessly fighting for one another in our own country today, and that we ought not to be, as we are, lost in battles over minutia. While the most privileged get exactly what they want, they win, we lose when we forget, as we have, just what our responsibility to each other as free citizens of America is. They are friends and not enemies of one another in Ukraine. They stand with and fight for each other there, as we once did, time and time again. Please, oh please, look at what they do, what they, against all odds, risk for what we already have. I pray for Ukraine and for every hero and victim of Putin's crimes against humanity. As I pray for my own country, God bless them and save them. And please, please, my friends, hold tight to what they teach us anew today. Thank you for being with, and I'll be back soon enough with hopefully lighter matters, maybe more family stuff. That would be nice. In the meantime, hold up one another, smile on your brothers and sisters, and take care.